So my name is Jay McDonnell. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I've been with Glass since 1992. So I got started in uh, by walking basically by a factory. It's the classic story, and I stayed till they had to give me a job. So I swept the floors and made glass, and eventually was allowed onto the floor after about six months and then slowly worked my way through a traditional six-year apprenticeship, sort of exploring every aspect of the material, from making the glass to, to uh, uh, running teams to design. And so having done my entire career in making functional work uh, for different people, I wanted to make something that was as non-functional as humanly possible. And so I started to make these pieces by combining uh, three different parts and joining together hot and achieving balance between the three parts. In a lot of ways, people always ask, like, why, why don't you just glue them? But when you see them together on the pipe, hot, you can adjust for, for gesture or for size or shape and bring balance to those three pieces. And then I get to play with color and how they, they interact with each other and when they go in groupings. And so from there, I sort of went from uh, very uh, on-center forms to becoming very organic, trying to really achieve the gesture that I was after. Uh, these pieces, like the one we did today, were based on, uh, my wife is a gardener, and she had all of these uh, bulbs, and I was cleaning out the, um, uh, the sort of gardening shed. And there were all these bulbs that didn't get planted, and they were all just sort of withdrawn and kind of withered, and then their energy sort of sinking back into itself. And I just thought these forms this, were just so beautiful. These were just so natural, the lines, how they were just shrinking back to themselves. And so I really wanted to achieve that in the material. Glass is a great material for achieving gesture. So I want them to be sort of soft and just kind of flow between them and just have a natural form. I like it, uh, I guess I've been doing it long enough and enough different uh, projects that when everything starts coming together and everyone, even though we only worked, like we literally just worked to get to get to, to get together, uh, even there at the end when everyone is torching and that sort of synergy that happens with everyone working together towards this thing, it almost gets quiet. That's the thing I really love about it, is that everything around you just kind of disappears and the hyper-focus of those situations when everything comes together and everything just happens. I love that moment. It's, you, you feel so connected to something. I think it's the closest thing that I can think of that would be like playing music with a band, where you just have that energy connecting you all together and you're all working in one. That's just an amazing feeling. Well, I mean, it's all technically challenging. I mean, there's, there's, those pieces are, are very technically challenging on all aspects. So there's a lot of uh, sort of clutch points that, that you hit and you just don't get another time to go around. Um, I just want to make sure that we get the piece off and everyone is happy and no one gets hurt at all. That's my main goal. And it's, I, I think for me, the worst outcome were if someone felt, you know, like somehow, like if I was rude to them or something like that, you know what I mean? I just, at the end of the day, if it's just a piece of glass. So if it smashes on the ground, I don't want anyone feeling bad about it. I just want everyone to be working towards the next one. When we started these pieces, I literally did like six months of these things just smashing on the ground every single week, three hours a week at my blow slot, with just a pile of glass on the ground. And so we just got to the state where it was, we called it team apathy. And it was like, meh, whatever, you know, because it smashes, right? And you just keep doing it and doing it. And eventually if the smashing doesn't mean anything. It's just a way of moving forward. I worked with this uh, designer, Bruce Mao. And, you know, we were working and doing these really complex pieces for him with all these complex color forms. And he came down one day and he said, you know, I think we just need to, I know where we want to get, even though we don't know what that end destination is. And I know that there's going to be failure to get there because things are just going to break until we figure it out. But the goal here, I think, is just to fail as fast as possible. So I think our goal for today is just to fail as fast as humanly possible, and then we'll get to the end of the destination faster. So that's kind of a big mantra of mine, it's just fail faster. <laughs>